All right, all right, all right. What's up, everybody? Big news story today, of course, is the uh, Chicago street race will be happening. It will uh, replace Road America. It was confirmed. Uh, in in uh, I think I think Bob Pockers asked after the uh, after the event or whatever. It was confirmed that Road America is out. So two big stories actually confirmed, even though we knew uh, that they were all coming anyway. But uh, for sure, uh, what are you guys' thoughts on the Chicago Street Race? Uh, I think there's a lot to break down there. I think. Uh, uh, Donald Camp, what's up, buddy? Um, there's a lot to break down. I'm fuzzy. Hopefully it clears up. Uh, let's see. Uh, just going to say this right here, New Hampshire. Custer's pit crew needs to be fired. That was awful. What was the Jack man thinking? That's molten rage. Yeah, for sure. Uh, they've had problems all season over there uh, on the 41. That car... It's had some decent runs actually lined up. Obviously, he's he's had a lot of bad luck, too. He's been in some wrecks. They've had some mechanical failures. But even the good runs he's had, uh, they've messed him up on pit road. I remember Martinsville. I was at Martinsville. They messed him up on pit road. So, I mean, this has been going on all season for them. That Probably they're, they're saving graces that the uh, uh, the 23 has been – the 23 pit crew was actually worse than them. So, I think that probably uh, took some of the, some of the uh, focus off them. But I think as, as you look at Cole Custer's season – I think probably 50% of it can be attributed to mistakes on pit road by, by the crew, not necessarily by him. So I think uh, Cole, Cole Custer's had a terrible year, but probably I would say about 50% of it is on on the pit crew. Uh, my big, biggest problem with Wisconsin and the Mecca that is for auto racing is losing their cup race again. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I remember the Milwaukee Mile was like a big, big, big deal back in the day, even, even when it was just the Bush Series racing there. Uh, the Milwaukee Mile that was always a big race. Everybody wanted to go to. Uh, I had a, it had a lot of cachet to it to win at the Milwaukee Mile, and actually it usually put on a pretty good race. Uh, I don't even know if that still exists. I don't know if they tore it down or if, or if the mile is still there uh, in disrepair. But uh, I remember that track was good. But then to take uh, to bring Road America into the mix. Road America is one of the most beloved tracks uh, in in the series in the sport. And then you uh, you bring it in and sort of you, you basically use them for a couple of years until you can get the Chicago uh, deal done is what this comes off as. I don't know if that's actually what happened, but that's sort of how it comes off to a lot of people. And I, don't, I it just I don't know if you can even go back to that market now because uh, you you've uh, made a lot of people angry uh, that they were supporting uh, racing in Wisconsin. Like you've you've. You want to grow your Midwest market, I, I assume. That's why they're going to Chicago. But uh, you, you've you angered another side of the Midwest market. So I, I don't know. In a way, they're saying, I guess, Chicago and Illinois is more important than Wisconsin in, in, in a way to some people. I don't want uh, a street race. NASCAR thought about doing it in the 80s or 90s. And we're like, nah, we're good. Yeah, uh, I'll give the street race a chance. I mean... I'm gonna give them a chance to see what see what it see what it's like, but I really I really hate that uh, we're losing Road America. Uh, it, it that definitely that definitely uh, stinks. Uh, I don't think I don't think the street race will be good. I will I'll, I'll give you that. I mean, like, but I was wrong about I was wrong about the LA Coliseum. The race was good. The racing was good. Uh, all the stuff that went around with like the halftime show that was that was lame. Like they they could have done without that. If if you're gonna do like a halftime type show run your three heat races, then have your halftime halftime show, and then have the main event. They should have done it that way, <clears throat> in my opinion. But uh, so I was wrong about that. Maybe I'll be wrong about the Chicago deal, but I don't think so. I don't see, I don't know. I don't think a street race is going to be, it's not going to put on a good show. Maybe it will with these cars, though. Uh, you really never know. Uh, so uh, it is what it is. Uh, I've been very disappointed on, on and very hard on Cole Custer this season. He's my favorite driver. I expected better, and I like him, but I can't see him flounder in this top tier ride. Yeah, he's he's in a tough spot. Like uh, a lot of people feel, he was he was gifted that ride because of who his dad is. I think he showed enough in the Xfinity series to prove he's a good driver. I think he's just having a bad season. So hopefully they will let him come back and he'll drive that car. Uh, if not, he's a young guy. He can work his way back up there. That won't. That shouldn't be a problem uh, at his age. 
Uh, Mil Milwaukee Wild Mile wouldn't make improvements, so that's when the, the Bush Series got moved to Road America. 10-4 uh, seems like a similar uh, situation to North Wilkesboro. They had some some of the uh, exact same problems uh, with that. Uh, so yeah, that's that's unfortunate. But I remember the Milwaukee Mile was the bomb back in the day. Like every, everybody wanted to win that race. Um, I remember. I think I think I watched Tracy Leslie win that race or something like that. He was running good at one point. He was driving an Oldsmobile in those V6s, those terrible sounding V6 Oldsmobiles back in the day. Uh, oh man, long long time ago. Uh, keep Xfinity and the trucks and the uh, uh, Mid American trucks in the Mid American cars on the Fourth of July weekend at Road America. I'll bet there will be a hundred uh, thousand fans there in spite. Yeah. Uh, so that's another good point. After like the, the first year, the first year of the Chicago street race, I think it'll be well attended because it'll be a new, it'll be a new deal. Everybody will kind of want to see what's going on with it. And then I kind of have the same ideas about the F1 race in Miami. It'll be well attended the first year, but the real test is what it does every year after that. What kind of attendance are you going to get every year after that? And I think you saw at road America that you were consistently going to have, uh, at least a hundred thousand people show up there to watch a race. I don't know if that's necessarily going to happen in Chicago, if that's going to continue to happen in LA, if they keep doing it there. So I think that'll be uh, a definite test. And I think, uh, especially if you can bring some other series in there to road America and, and pack it out like you did for the cup race, I think you'll sort of be proving your point. Uh, and I think I would like to see that. I think I'd like to see road America continue to have some type of uh, NASCAR race in there. Uh, but it, it really feels like if they don't do something uh, with Road America, they're, they're going to sort of burn a bridge there. Uh, what do you think about Reddick? I feel like he's making a bad decision. And I think when he, uh, and I think when he back RCR back, that's what it seems like. I think when he back RCR back. I don't know. I don't know that he's necessarily making. I didn't understand the last part of the question. It's probably a typo, uh, which I do all the time. Uh, I fat thumb everything I type, uh, but uh, he he made a decision, and I can understand where he's coming from. His execution of the decision is is more of of what I didn't understand or had an issue with, however you want to say it. Uh, he's he's banking on that twenty three eleven is going to be better in the future than RCR because right right now currently, if you look at RCR, I would say RCR has probably had a better season, more consistent than twenty three eleven. Because Tyler Reddick should have two two wins if uh, Chase Briscoe hadn't have thrown that crazy no chance in the world of ever working slide job. He would have won Dirt Bristol, and then he would have won the road course that he won. So uh, I see RCR having two wins. So I think, and they've been more consistent. They don't, but what you have with 2311, 2311 will blow you out of the water with speed sometimes. Sometimes they'll show up to the track and they'll have the fastest cars there. Uh, like Toyota this weekend, uh, they were part of that. They they had some of the fastest cars there. So I think he's banking on 2311's future. Uh, but the way he left uh, definitely left something to be desired. He should have, uh, if I if, if I was doing it, and that's all I can say, I would have waited till after the season was over with, then I would have announced it because now it's sort of going to be like a distraction for the playoffs. Uh, that's kind of my only real issue with it, and, and it sort of hurts them on getting sponsors lined up for the future. Uh, there's no camping in a street race. Uh, two Two penny puppet said that. That's a that's a very good point. Uh, I would like to see the layout for the fans. Like they showed the layout for the track. I would like to see the layout for the fans and on on, on all that good stuff. Uh, where do you park the RVs? Is there going to be something like that? Uh, I would definitely like to see that. Uh, hey, Baloney bunch, to see a NASCAR series on a street course. Look up Canada's Pinty series. Uh, that's for sure. The Pinty series actually just had a street course race and. I can't call the guy's name that won it, but I retweeted it, and he was driving a Dodge Challenger. So two things. If you want to see Dodge's race, go check out the Piney Series. And uh, if you want to see NASCAR racing on a street course, check out the Piney Series. Uh, I, I caught some highlights. I didn't see the whole race. Uh, but it's definitely a cool series, and I like it. Uh, Pete Shepard and uh, Alex LeBay are the two are the two main guys I know from that series. I think they're both pretty good. And uh, I think Alex LeBay – if he can get a decent ride in Xfinity, I think he could show, show him a few things. Uh, but he needs to get, uh, I guess, a little bit more money behind him to get a better ride. Um, I've gotten a question about, the, I've got a, I have a question about the truck series. Go ahead and go ahead and ask it, Chris. Uh, I think when, I think when he's RCR, I, I think, I think he went behind RCR's back. Oh, he, he went behind RCR's back. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I got you. Uh, well, uh, they definitely didn't see it coming, so they were they were not as aware about it uh, 
as as he thought. Um, so that that is for sure. Uh, they didn't know anything about it. I'll give you that. That's for sure. Um, yeah, it's just just it's just kind of a bad deal. I mean, if you're an RCR fan like me, it stinks. If you're a 2311 fan, hey, it's awesome. You got a great driver, so it is what it is. But I thought I thought he left. Uh, he could have left in a little bit of a better manner. Uh, Michael Curtis, what are your thoughts on Pocono this weekend? Well, Pocono is actually, I know a lot of people uh, don't like Pocono. I like Pocono. I like Pocono a lot. It's a weird track. It's one of those tracks where you can sort of figure things out. And uh, and thank you, Michael, for the super chat. That is awesome. I really appreciate That's my first super chat, by the way, guys. That's awesome. Um, so uh, I, I like Pocono as a track, and it's one of those tracks where you can really dial your car in and absolutely just take off and, 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 and smoke them and... I like it, but I really am excited to see what this new car is going to do on Pocono. Uh, it's either going to be a really great show or it's really going to be a really boring one. Uh, the other thing about Pocono is if people keep complaining about the triangle, I would like to see them at least attempt a race on the uh, road course that they have there. Uh, but Pocono is a really cool track, and everybody that goes there, uh, if you actually attend the event in person, a lot of people have really good things to say about the track. It's a really well-run track, uh, and it is a... Uh, Fun fact, sister track to South Boston. They are owned by the same people. Um, let's see here. Tyler Reddick made a great decision. He's not going to do anything in RCR equipment uh, when he's getting so much attention or the focus that RCR should be given. Uh, yeah, so that's a big co uh, comment that a lot of people have been making. They feel like Austin Dillon's getting the better stuff and Tyler Reddick's the better driver. I don't know. Uh, I don't know how you would prove that. Uh, they're definitely different drivers, and I definitely think Tyler Reddick is a better driver, but I don't know that – that because because Richard Childress has said on multiple occasions that he wanted to build bef – before all this happened, he was saying, I want to build uh, RCR around Tyler Reddick. So I think that's the other thing that hurt him really bad. They were they're really planning on building around this guy. Uh, so it's just, it's just a tough situation uh, if you're RCR, but uh, I understand it from uh, Tyler Reddick's perspective. He's looking at 2311 and he's, he's like, these guys have no problem getting sponsors in. Uh, they're really fast some weekends. Now, now 2311 needs to work on their consistency and definitely needs to work on the pit stops. Uh, but I think he's, he's projecting into the future. He thinks that they'll be better. They're on a better curve to uh, improve than RCR is on a curve to improve. Uh, so I think that's what he was looking at for that. Uh, you're talking about a state that produced two champions with Alan Kowicki, uh, Matt Kenseth, and multiple time winners uh, like Mr. Trickle. I can't say his first name because I might get uh, popped here, uh, Speedway Anywhere. But uh, yeah, for sure, uh, Trickle is one of my favorite drivers of all time. Uh, I might do a thing on him uh, later. Uh, but don't forget the Sauters. The Sauters came from Milwaukee, too. Uh, Scott Wimmer was definitely a really good driver. He never, nobody won in Bill Davis equipment except for Ward Burton. So if Scott Wimmer had been in, in, in different equipment in the Cup Series, who knows what would what, what, what would have happened there. Um, Milwaukee, uh, Wisconsin has produced – I keep saying Milwaukee. Wisconsin has produced a lot of really good drivers uh, for sure. I've got the Milwaukee mile stuck in my head. Um, but, yeah, uh, Wisconsin has produced a ton of good drivers, and, and I, really, I really hope that they get a track uh, for a Cup date soon or some type of, some type of racing up there because uh, they definitely deserve one. Uh, Parker wins in Ohio, Chris Davis. Yeah, for sure, man. I wanted to actually make a video on that, but just the way things went, uh, things, uh, just didn't, didn't work out. I didn't get to make a video on it, but he's basically got the smallest team, team uh, that I know of in any series that has won a race. Uh, so good for them. Hen Henderson, I think is the name of the, the racing team. So good for them. Uh, and Parker Kligerman gets a win. And he said that win might propel them to get, uh, a full-time deal. Uh, going on, am I on I racing? No, uh, uh, Radage asked that. Uh, I used to race Forza. I tried I racing. My internet is not good enough. Uh, it's too much lagging, and 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 it just uh, I can't do I racing for some reason. Uh, I used to play Forza back in the day when I lived uh, elsewhere, though. So I, I'm big on the sim racing type stuff because uh, For Forza you can turn off all the assists, and it's it's pretty similar to I racing. Um, but I was a big Forza guy, the original Forza, not Forza Horizon and, and the stuff like that, like the, the Forza where it was just like racing and stuff like that. Um, so I played those up through maybe Forza 5, uh, whichever one that had the uh, Top Gear guys on it. That was the last one I really uh, played and got into. Uh, I bought the other ones. I just didn't play them and get into them uh, as much. But yeah, I, I, and I really believe that the path from video games, I wish somebody would make it easier that 
you could play a video game and you could find all these young kids on video games. And then uh, maybe later uh, put them in, in a legend car or, or a late model or something. I wish there was a much more clearer path because if they show talent on, on, on a video game, I think they should at least get a chance if they want to, to race in real life. Um, so I'm, I'm a big, I'm big on it. I'm just not uh, in I racing. I did try it for like, I'm not going to say I tried it. I tried it for a little while and it just, my, my internet wasn't good enough for it where I live at now. Um, what up gang? Forgot the time was watching Deegan's SRX video. Uh, yes, yeah, she makes plenty of good videos. Uh, she made some news on Twitter, uh, this week. I think I saw her trending a little bit. Uh, Mark Barnum with that. Um, Ralph Engel, no more road courses. Yeah. People are tired of road courses. Uh, at least they didn't add one. They're just sort of taking one away and putting another one in. Uh, Mark Barnum wants to boycott that race. I can't say that because I, I, I think that's one of the things that got the other uh, video I made in trouble. Uh, so I can't say it. Mark Wachowski, Richard Trickle. Absolutely. Yeah. Like once again, like there's so many rules. I don't, I don't want to, um, mess up here. So, uh, but, uh, Richard Trickle was one of my favorite drivers of all time. That 84, when he ran for rookie year in that 84 gold Miller car, that's one of the prettiest cars I've ever seen. Uh, and I wish I could find a, a good die cast of it, but they're hard to find out there. Uh, that Miller paint scheme was really famous with Bobby Allison too. And, and uh, they had some IMSA cars as well. Prototypes, I believe that were really cool. Uh, Donald Camp said, yes, a thousand times I'm over the road. Yeah. I think a lot of people have had it with road courses. Uh, I, I like road courses, but I'm not going to force that. Cause I know, uh, NASCAR is a circle track. They, they came here for circle track racing. So I, I wouldn't force that on anybody. I enjoy the road courses, but I understand I'm in the minority on that. Um, and I think, uh, we have enough road courses now, maybe take one away, uh, for a, a little bit better balance, uh, in the schedule. Uh, if anything, definitely don't add any more. Um, do you do any kind of racing? Uh, Stay tuned, Robin Marks. I do do some racing, and we will uh, do. We will. Uh, we will have some some updates on that at a later date. Um, do you think the Truck Series gets too many off weeks? I do, actually. I do. Uh, Douglas Serrano asked that question. I do think the Truck Series gets too many off weeks, uh, but they recently just did it that way, and I think it was to secure the finances of that series. Uh, but I would love to see more truck dates. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know how you go about it, and I would like to see them in conjunction with the Cup Series races, too, because I feel like the trucks are some of the best racing out there. This season, it's been a wreck fest, uh, but typically, back in the day, the trucks were some of the best, cleanest racing, just hard racing that there was out there. Um, 100% agree with RCR thoughts from Moulton. Uh, Gerald Walraven said that. Yeah, I think he made the best decision uh, going into the future in his mind. I, I can't predict the future, so I don't know which one of those teams are going to be any better than the other one. Uh, but he, he did what was right by him. And here's the other thing that not a lot of people are talking about. He probably got paid a lot of money to do that. So with, whenever you can secure money for your family, absolutely go for it. So good for him. I'm not knocking him. I just wish he had left <laughs> a little bit better so that RCR could line some stuff up uh, a little bit better before they announced uh, he was leaving. But uh, it is what it is. He made his decision. And I, 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 if I can find some information on that, I'll make a video on why he made his decision. Because I think I saw something about that the other day. Uh, Dodge Talk has been non-existent lately. That's true, John Lewis. Uh, but it doesn't mean uh, it's not happening. It, it just means it could be close. Because I think Adam Stern reported it was close, really close. And I think uh, David Land said it was, uh, his source said it was 80% close uh, at one point. Uh, so you never know. You never know. They might just be waiting for certain contracts to run out so they can make an announcement. Uh, RCR has basically turned into Roush. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're not elite. RCR is not elite. Ralph Engel, uh, Engelhart is talking about this. I don't I don't think Austin Dillon is that good of a driver. He was good in dirt late models, but honestly hasn't impressed me. Yeah, he, he tore it up in, in, in trucks and dirt late models and uh, the Xfinity series, but he's been, uh, I would equate... Austin Dillon to Eric Almarola, a very, very consistent driver, but he's only going to win every so often. He's never going to be a guy that, that comes in and wins like six or seven races, five, four or five races. He's never going to be that guy. He just reminds me of a guy that's really consistent. Uh, Ryan Newman later in his career. I know Ryan Newman had that one six or seven race uh, season, but after that, Ryan Newman was just super consistent and he would get you a win here or there, but he never... He never stacked up wins, but he was always consistently, he would get you a top 10. Because you look every weekend, Austin Dillon, 
Uh, he's like running 20th, 20th. Then at the end of the race, you see him and he's, uh, you see him and he's, uh, somehow managed to get into the top 10 or something like that. So, uh, yeah, most of these young I racers can't even drive a stick. Michael Curtis, LOL. Uh, well, going into the future, I don't think it's going to matter because because in the Cup Series, I just got the 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 manumatic shifter or whatever they call that thing. Uh, ah, crap, I can't think of the name of it. Uh, let's see, RCR never learned from the Harvick deal. Uh, twenty twenty four, maybe JRM buys them. Uh, yeah, like there's there's been a lot of speculation that that Junior is going to buy into them. I think if anybody buys. RCR would be colleague because they run out of the same building. Uh, so I think colleague would buy RCR before anybody else. Uh, RCR, here's a solution that you would have prevent Reddick from leaving your organization. It's called three words, three words, multi-year contract. Uh, you understand? So you messed yourself up on that job. Yeah, they went for the extension instead of just uh, renegotiating another contract. But I think I don't think that had anything to do with it. I think Tyler Reddick was going to leave either way because he's he said I wanted to honor my contract because they gave me a chance. So I think he in his mind, he was just using them as a stepping stone anyway. I just don't think RCR saw it that way. So I think it was just a, a they saw they saw the situation different. Uh, RCR thought that he saw him as growing with them, whereas I think he saw RCR as a stepping stone to a better team. Um, I do think it's interesting he went to 2311. I think he could have held out for Hendrick or actual big Joe Gibbs. Uh, but that, to me, that was the most interesting part because he was probably the biggest free agent. Uh, and I think he could have got with a, a more established team. So uh, that was the biggest thing for me. Uh, what's made New Hampshire better than Martinsville? Trent asked. Uh, I I really don't know. They had that Martinsville tire test before New Hampshire and they had uh, – they had the Martinsville race to go off of. So possibly notes. And now that they know how the car is going to react, but I agree with you hundred percent. It was a much better race. Uh, and, and you can't uh, factor in that the weather wasn't different too. They've also had some time to figure out exactly how aggressive they can go uh, with the tire pressures here. Uh, but that's a good question. Uh, good question, Trent. Uh, it's hard to say, but I, I just think they've got enough notes now that they sort of knew what they could push and what they couldn't push because you did didn't see even though it was hotter you didn't see as many uh, tires uh, blowing out and stuff like that so i think they i think they just uh have enough notes on the car now they know sort of where they can push things and they've had that extra tire test uh in between uh so i think they might have learned something there but interestingly in that tire test it was uh austin Cendrick, tyler reddick and kyle bush and other than kyle bush none of those guys really ran great there uh, so that was interesting that they got a tire test on a similar track uh, being Martinsville and, and only one guy from that tire test learned something, it seems like. Uh, Houston Scott said, hi, what's up, Houston? Um, with the new car, do you think the Brickyard 400 will be fun again? Uh, Donald Camp, that's a good question. It's such a different track. I think I think you could probably draft a little bit better there uh, so you'd be able to stay tucked into somebody. Uh, but I think, I think it would be better than the other races we've seen there, but Indianapolis is a hard track. Uh, even with the Indy cars, it's hard to get going, but I'd love, I'm, I'm, I'm going to love to see the cars go around the circle track at Indianapolis. Uh, that's for sure. Um, I would love to see trucks at Iowa Speedway. Yeah. Yeah. Iowa Speedway is a truck that, uh, Mark, Mark Barnum said that Iowa Speedway is another track that people sequential shifter. Thank you. CPO, CPO fast forward. Thank you. I couldn't, couldn't get it out. Yeah. I was a track that a lot of people want to see back on the schedule. Uh, for, even for cup, like I, I was a big, a track that gets a lot of push. Uh, they got a lot of great race fans up there. So I, I know they want a, a, a big cup date as well. Uh, Chevy, what is Chevy even going to have on the track in 2024? Yeah, that's a good question. I guess it'll be a Camaro, uh, I'm guessing, because uh, it's the only car that they've got left. Same as Ford with the Mustang. I think that's the only car they got left. And, uh, well, Toyota's got several options, I guess. So I guess Toyota's the only technical multiple car manufacturer, because uh, I think the uh, Camaro and the Mustang are the only two cars still being made uh, that they could race. I think Chevrolet still makes that tiny little uh, spark, spark car. But I think that's discontinued after this year. So that so yeah, that wouldn't make it to 2024 either. Uh, two two penny puppet. Any word on the 2023 schedule? Six weeks ago, they said they'd release next year's schedule in six to eight weeks. Uh, I think they wanted to get through the Chicago uh, announcement, and they'll probably announce it after that because now that they've announced Chicago, they can probably announce the rest of the schedule. So I would look for it probably next week, or they might announce it this weekend at the race. Um, so that that definitely, I think they were just waiting on the Chicago announcement. 
uh, to be honest with you. Uh, Douglas Serrano, I'm asking this question again because of Thunderstorm two weeks ago. Will Matt Benedetto's truck back ass be available in the T.W. Fearson and Darlington throwback schemes? Oh, that's a good question. So they've, they'll probably offer it. Here's what they've been doing with die cast. So it's hard to say if it'll actually be available. They offer it. And then if enough people buy it, they go ahead and make it. But if enough people don't pre-order it, they just don't make it. So you'll probably see it offered. Uh, but whether or not they actually make it, because because I've had a few cars this year that I ordered and they didn't get made. And I was like, well, great. Uh, so uh, you just never know. Uh, but they, they'll probably offer it. And if they offer it and you and you want it, I, I would say go ahead and, and put in the pre-order uh, and get it because uh, they're going. It looks like they're going off of pre-orders. The, the, the diecast world has been kind of weird recently. They're just going off pre-orders. Uh, and if they don't get enough pre-orders, they don't make them. Uh, very worried about the reckless street racing. Uh, this could encourage on the city streets of Chicago. Uh, Chase's champ uh, said that. Yeah, some politician in Chicago said that, that the NASCAR racing would, would lead to more... Uh, Reckless uh, driving in the streets of Chicago, the old uh, video games cause problems argument uh, is, is very ludicrous in my opinion. And I, I don't get into politics and stuff like that. Uh, I think all politicians are out for your vote and then they don't care about you anymore. So I just I, I stay away from politics. Uh, Martinsville uh, was colder, 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 cold. That's for sure. Yeah, Martinsville, uh, the tires might not have been able to uh, get all the heat in them. That they wanted to get them. I uh, get in them too, but I also think they've got a notebook on it now too. So I think it's, it's a combination of things. Don't forget uh, up and comers, Ty Majeski, Luke Finhouse, Eric Darnell, uh, Travis Voppel. Uh, you talking about Carson's Voppel and son Carson Voppel. I think so. You're talking about Dave Marcus, Robbie Ryder, and the latest Slinger Nationals winner, a junior motorsports driver of the, of the one uh, Sam Mayer uh, would be him. And plus many more. Yeah, that's for sure. Um, Carson Voppel is an interesting one. Uh, and don't forget, uh, Lane Riggs, Lane Riggs, uh, recently just signed with, uh, Baron Von Weebs, uh, with that comment. Uh, yeah, Lane Riggs just signed with, uh, Halmar Friesen or Friesen Halmar, Halmar Friesen. And, uh, he's, so he's going to be the next late model guy that goes up to trucks, but yeah, there's a ton of talent out there and I hope they all get a chance. Uh, Bobby McCarty last weekend with, uh, Mike Harmon racing didn't make the field, uh, which was, was a disappointment, uh, but at least he got a chance. Uh, so hopefully he'll get a chance and a little bit better equipment uh, going forward. But I, I love all I love all these guys getting a chance. Uh, all these guys from the lower level, I hope they all get a chance uh, if they're winning races. Not surprised Reddick left. If uh, you ever worked at a family-owned operation and you weren't one of the kids, you know you're never going to get treated fairly. Uh, Legrande Chene uh, said that. So I, I think that's a fair point. Uh, whether it's true or not, that's definitely always going to be your perception, right? So, um, no matter uh, how it's run, that's definitely, uh, the feeling. And we know for sure that that was a feeling that Kevin Harvick had. So you can say that that is a legitimate comment because at least we know that Kevin Harvick, who was there for a very long time, felt that way. And, uh, Kevin Harvick, uh, basically a championship driver when he was there because he finished second in the points multiple times, even in his uh, lame duck year, he, he, he won four races. So uh, all the people saying that they might let uh, Tyler Reddick go, they might let him go, but also they might keep him and he might have a great season because they do have a track history of keeping a guy on for lame duck season and having a really, really good year. So uh, it's just going to be interesting to see what happens with that deal. Uh, it's a big question, big, big question going into next season. Uh, Moulton says, I'm just going to say this next year, looking at how mediocre he's been, uh, Kevin Harvick could possibly announce his retirement. Yeah, a lot of people are speculating that Harvick might be gone uh, after next year. Uh, a, lo a lot of people are saying uh, after next year's over with, Harvick, uh, Kurt Busch, and Martin Truex will all be gone. So that'll be a lot of uh, a lot of people's favorite drivers would all retire at the same time if that comes to be true. Uh, we'll just have to wait and see, but it'll definitely uh, be interesting to watch. Uh, how many drivers works finished with second place for cars in a row? Uh, I don't know, uh, Houston Hocut. I'm not sure. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Mark Wachowski, wish Tyler the best. He is a man who uh, had to make decisions he thinks will uh, make his racing career more successful and profitable. Breaking up is always hard. Yeah, I agree with that 100%, Mark. Uh, like I'm, like I said, I'm disappointed to watch him go, but I'm also pulling for him to be very successful at the next stop in his career. 
uh, because he he left RCR better than when he arrived there for sure, in my opinion. So, yeah, I, I hate to see him go, but I wish him the best. Uh, so, yeah, like you said, he's he he had to make probably the hardest decision of all time. Uh, I don't know why he chose twenty three eleven, but it'll be interesting. I think he sees that actually as what RCR thought he was going to see RCR as as a place where he can grow and build together. Uh, so I think it's going to be a neat deal to see what happens over there. Um, and he's a young guy, so uh, could could be good for a long time. Or if he doesn't like it over there, he's a young guy. He could just, uh, you know, if he doesn't like it there, go up to the next one because uh, I think he'll still be a profitable free agent either way. Uh, Dewalt paint scheme on the 18 was sharp. Uh, yeah, uh, Aaron, Aaron Flynn said that. Uh, Joe Gibbs Racing was messing with all of us, putting uh, Martin Truex in that 19 uh, interstate batteries car and putting the 18 in the Dewalt car. It was hard to figure out uh, who was driving what uh, at certain points in that race, uh, but it was pretty funny. Uh, La Grande Chine says, uh, Iowa, great track, nice area. Uh, I've not been to Iowa, but I hear a lot of people talk about how great the race fans are up there and how great all the racetracks are up there uh, for the most part. They all, they're always well attended, especially the dirt races and stuff like that. So I would like to go check one out. So maybe in the future, I uh, will see that. What's your thoughts on Harrison Burton? Uh, was it a vault ride, uh, Don McLeese? I think uh, sponsorship for the Harrison Burton deal was 100% uh, a big factor in that. Uh, you, you got two things with Harrison Burton. You, you got a last name and, and the Wood Brothers like that, uh, but you also have funding. So I think the reason that they went with Harrison Burton is uh, sort of the same thing we we're talking about with uh, Tyler Reddick, the financial security of having a guy for, you know, three, three seasons uh, the Wood Brothers don't have to worry three or four seasons. The Wood Brothers don't have to worry about sponsorship and they can keep the Wood Brothers going for another three seasons without scrambling for money. So I think that did uh, have a, a part to do with it for sure. Uh, who are the championship four favorites as of today? Gerard uh, Walraven asked that. Uh, I would go probably, you got to go um, Chase Elliott for sure. Uh, I want to put Blaney in there. I feel like Blaney is a strong choice. Uh, Ross Jastain is still in the mix. And if it was earlier in the season, I would still say William Byron. But William Byron has gone ice cold. Uh, so I don't know who my other who my other guy would be in that. It's always hard to bet against Kyle Busch, but he's been sort of up and down, uh, sort of inconsistent. Um, believe it or not, I would have to put Denny Hamlin in there because he's, he's having the type of season where – uh, it doesn't matter where he finishes. He always gets a, a race win when he needs one. So uh, I, in an odd way, I would say Denny Hamlin because the way this playoff format is set up, he, he's basically win or he wrecks. So I don't know. Uh, I mean, Joey Logano, you'd have to put Logano in there. logano has been hot uh, all season just about. He didn't even have a great car uh, last race, and he still ended up getting a pretty decent finish out of it. Uh, Would have had a way, way better finish if they hadn't stayed out and, and tried that long run on tires. If they had the same strategy that Kurt Busch had with staying out, they probably would have had a top 10 as well. So I don't know. Uh, that's, a, that's a tough question, but of those five, pick, pick four of those five I just mentioned. Um, let's see. Uh, oh, there you go. Uh, Kyle Larson. Yeah, uh, Kyle Larson, he's had a, a solid season. He just he hasn't been up there contending for wins like you expect him to be, uh, for sure. But he went he went with the 9, the 5, the 18, and the 22. Uh, that's, that's pretty solid, uh, for sure. Uh, a lot of the guys I mentioned, uh, you swapped out. Who did we swap out? Ross Chastain for uh, Kyle Larson. I, I mean, I'm on board with that, for sure. Uh, but I think Ross Chastain's having a season, for sure. Um a lot of people are saying no Ross because of the enemies. Uh, yeah, but Joey Logano won it with a bunch of enemies the year he won it too. So it just depends on are these guys going to keep talking about it or are they actually going to do something? Uh, that's uh, that's that's one of the questions I've got. Uh, Cole Custer is driving the 07, uh, not the 48. Uh, Mark Barnum, uh, 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 Molten Rage, I guess correct in a comment from somewhere else. Um, do, 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 do. Oh, yeah, Stenhouse is driving the 48. Uh, Molten Rage said that. That's interesting because it was supposed to be Tyler Reddick. Uh, the 48 is a car that's prepared by RCR. Uh, so Tyler Reddick is no longer driving it and uh, in, in the Xfinity Series, and they have put Ricky Stenhouse in there. So that, that was an interesting move. <laughs> I think that's a little bit of uh, animosity possibly there. They don't want him to uh, be their R&D guy anymore. 
uh, or whatever's going on there. But that, that, that definitely was uh, definitely in response to the 2311 signing. So uh, definitely some pettiness going on, in my opinion. Uh, but that's, that's just it. There might be a legitimate reason, but in my opinion, I think that was just a, a, a petty move, uh, which I like. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not going to lie about it. I like a little drama every once in a while. Uh, Blaney hasn't won a race. Uh, Chris Davis said, yeah, I agree with that, but uh, he's had a great season regardless of that. Uh, but I, th- I think uh, head and shoulders, Chase Elliott's had the best season. I mean, you look at his statistics, uh, he's, he's almost number one in every statistic. Uh, so I, I would have to say Chase Elliott is, is your odds on favorite uh, and everybody else you can argue about like it, not a big deal right now. Right now, Chase is looking like the guy to beat. Um, I would love to see NASCAR race at Belle Isle and Detroit like IndyCar since uh, Detroit is Ford and Chevy's home. Uh, I would, too, but I don't know if uh, I don't know if they're going to do Belle Isle again. I think uh, I think the IndyCar has left it uh, and I think they had a reason for leaving it. Uh, I think David Land made a video about that, uh, if I'm not mistaken. So I think uh, I'm not sure Bell Isle will be on the schedule uh, for anybody coming up. I, I think they just had it was too expensive to put on and, and, and things like that. Uh, but uh, I'd like to see I'd like to see them race there if they're going to race anywhere. Uh, Detroit would be a cool race. I don't know if anybody would attend because Detroit's got a bad reputation. Uh, but uh i'm all for it if they want to go to big cities i guess this is what they got to do they got to have street races if you want to race in big cities um so yeah uh everybody everybody's given their uh their picks for the uh for their uh top top five or top four the the final four so uh, if you want to give your pick for the final four go ahead and shoot them in there uh i'll see i'll kind of see if they all match up so far so far the only things matching up are the nine and the 22 everything else uh everything else is sort of in flux so we got Logano and Chase Elliott leading the charge right now. Uh, rooting for Ross, though. Uh, Jared Walraven. Me, uh, Gerard, Gerard. I keep calling him Gerald. Gerard Walraven. Uh, let's see. Mark Barnum. Uh, Blaney will not make the playoffs. Going to be 16 winners. If he doesn't win a race, I would agree with you. I think there's going to be 16 different winners. But I think Ryan Blaney will be one of those 16 different winners, uh, if I'm just guessing. Uh, but I, I do think we'll have 16 winners. So if he's not one of the winners, I would agree with you on that. Uh, and, and, and in a dark way, I want him to miss the playoffs being second or third in points so that they have to really assess and explain why that happened uh, to Ryan Blaney fans, because it would be complete and total uh, nonsense for the man who's second or third in points not to even make the playoffs because he didn't have a win. Uh, but it is what it is. I'm, I'm waiting on that. I want to see a Cup Series race at Iowa and a Truck Series race at the Brickyard. So... Uh, Indianapolis is real funny about who they let run on the actual oval. So I don't know if they would let trucks run an oval race there, but it would be cool. Douglas Serrano. I agree with that. Uh, but the, the purists are really, really, they didn't, they didn't even want the cup cars running on the oval. Uh, so it would be a hard push to see them do the oval, but they could, they could probably do the, uh, road course that probably wouldn't be an issue in Iowa uh, for sure I think everybody wants to see an Iowa uh, an Iowa race for cup uh, or most people I'm not gonna say everybody uh, molten rage with the hot take there's not going to be 16 different winners it'll be 15 at best I like it taking a stand making a bold prediction uh, Cindric is starting to race well now yeah uh, Michael Curtis that's a good point average finish to seventh in the past six races yeah so that's kind of what you expect with a rookie halfway through the season. At least one of them is going to pick it up and figure it out. And it looks like Austin Cindric, obviously he won the Daytona 500. He's got a win under his belt already, but uh, he was sort of streaky at the beginning of this other than that Daytona race. Uh, so it's good to see him start to find some consistency. And I think you'll see throughout Austin Cindric's uh, career, he starts off uh, not necessarily the greatest in the world, but he works hard and he gets better and he gets better. So I, I, I expected him to get better midway through the season. Uh, and I think next season, with uh, more information, more laps on track, I think you'll see him get better and better and better, uh, for sure. Uh, I'm big on Austin Cindric. I think he'll be really good. Um, Chase Elliott's average this year is 10.4. Yep, average finish is 10.4. And I think his average starting position is something like that, too. Uh, he's he's finished and qualified well. Uh, Chris Buescher is knocking on the door of a win in the 17. Uh, yeah, RFK, uh, Mark Wilkowski, I uh, said that. Uh, RFK has actually uh, lived up to a preseason prediction. Uh, one of the, one of the few I got right uh, that 
I said that halfway through the season, you would see them turn around, and you actually saw it. I think Brad Keselowski's been running the R&D in that six car, and I think they hit on something at uh, New Hampshire, and I think going forward that will help them out in the season. Uh, well, my hat's way crooked. Uh, you'll see them. You'll see them help them out the, the rest of the season. Uh, so I think you'll see uh, the 17 car get closer and closer. And uh, we got what? At least one more road course. Uh, we know he's good at road courses, so he could punch the ticket at a road course. Uh, would be good. Would be really cool to see the, the 17 in the playoffs or the six. Uh, it just looks like the 17's got the better shot. Uh, but RFK in the playoffs would be good, uh, and actually threaten to win some races would uh, be good as well. I actually go by Jerry if that's easier. <laughs> no, you're good, Gerard. I'll call you whatever whatever you'd like to be called. Uh, uh, just reading too fast, uh, to be honest with you. Uh, we got a 9 and an 18 by Houston Hokut. Uh, 9, 18, 12, and 5. Uh, that is, uh, okay, so that's, it looks like the 12 is getting into the mix a little bit. So we got 12 and 22 and 9 locked in for sure. Um, 18 and 5 starting to trend as well, so we'll figure it out. Um, I don't know how to put a poll up, but one day I will figure that out. Uh, let's see. Uh, baseball diamond shaped track would be cool since the Coliseum was such a hit. I could see him doing that. But then you'd have to figure out the uh, which uh, which baseball stadium you want to go to. Uh, I would vote Texas because it couldn't possibly be any worse than the track they got there now. Uh, let's see. Uh, glad Christopher finally got the win. I'm realistically hoping uh, he makes the round of eight uh, for the new street race in Chicago. Yellow flag. Oh, man, I can't say that. Uh, but uh, that's definitely the reputation they've got. RC said that. Um, yeah, Christopher Bell, I'm glad he got that win. I felt like he sort of got stuck with a bad situation getting the uh, the tire changer that kept make, making mistakes on the uh, 23. So I felt like he was a bad situation there. And he's had a good season except for the first five races. First five races, he was terrible. But ever since those first five races, he's really be rebounded and he he was on a tear for a while. He hit sort of a doldrum here recently, but then he got that win. So he is a guy that could definitely make the round of eight. And if he gets hot at the right time, like we saw Joey Logano that one year, you could see him being one of those guys that upsets the uh, the whole playoff deal. Uh, we got the one, the nine, and the 12. So another Ross Chastain, uh, Chase Elliott vote there. Martin uh, Martin Truex, that's a good pick. I like that pick. Make, making the final four, maybe he finds something toward the end of the season and gets hot. Uh, let's see. Will Xfinity change cars? John Lewis asked that. I think they will eventually. They'll have to. Uh, but I think for the next two or three years, you'll see them race what they got. Um, also aspire to have a room dedicated to NASCAR merch and equipment soon. RC said that. That's awesome, dude. Uh, I hope everybody, uh, if they are so inclined, can have a room like that uh, for themselves. Uh, let's see. Bubba Wallace's average running position is 6.28. Uh Average, average running position. Mm, I don't know about that, Aaron Flynn. Uh, his running position, I don't know. His finishing position has been bad because he's had some bad luck and because of his pit crew. So I don't, I don't know uh, what advanced statistic that is. Uh, but all right, uh, Mark Wachowski, Corey LaJoy is also hungry or close to a win. Uh, should win this year. Yeah. Yeah, but it's going to have to be on like a I – I just don't think his team is, is capable unless it's on a, a restrictor or a super speedway. Uh, I don't know. Uh, Robert Stone just stopping in to say uh, hello. I've got a side work tonight. What's up, Robert? Thanks for dropping by and hanging out with us for a minute. Uh, Aaron Flynn, what are you talking about? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, the sixth car could win Michigan. That's that's a fact. Uh, he's really good there. Uh, Austin Dillon is also really good at Michigan. Like uh, certain drivers are just good at certain tracks. Like we saw, like Christopher Bell, just Magic uh, New Hampshire. He's really it's Magic Mile, right? New Hampshire. He's really good there. Um, so sometimes a guy figures out a track and he's just really hard to beat there. Um, definitely could see the sixth car winning there. Uh, running position. Aaron, Aaron Flynn, running position. I got you. Uh, I'd love to see Keselowski win at Michigan International Speedway. I, Keselowski winning would really, really shake up the playoffs. So I'd love to see Keselowski or anybody who's way back there in points get a win. I think that would be really cool. Carson Hart, Hosevar is hungry for a win in the trucks. He's been so close so many times. Douglas Serrano, yeah, Hosevar is super close to winning. Uh, he's sort of in that Tyler Reddick position where you're like, man, this guy's got to win eventually, right? Uh for the longest time, it felt like uh, Tyler Reddick wasn't going to win. He finally broke through. So uh, I think Carson Hosefar will also break through as well. Uh, Eric Jones is the most underrated driver in NASCAR. Changed my mind. 
Uh, he's up there. I, I think they did a poll on him. Uh, and I think it was him and Michael McDowell were the, were the, were the top two that everybody uh, thought was the most underrated. So uh, that's another thing we can talk about here is uh, who's more underrated, Eric Jones or Michael McDowell. That will be a good one to do. Uh, do Tony's idea with half of the field going backwards to spice up the playoffs. Oh man, Tony Stewart, he always had uh he always had something to say uh about <laughs> about NASCAR changing things. Donald Camp, I remember that. Uh Donald Camp with that comment. Uh yeah, I remember uh I remember him uh saying that. That was pretty funny. Um and I think I think that was the same year that he actually ended up winning. Uh he got on that hot streak and and basically stole that championship from Carl Edwards. Uh, I think that was the same year uh, he complained about the point system like that and then went and won the points uh, under that system. Uh, so that I think I think that all happened the same year. After this weekend, we'll start having early start times at Indy and Michigan. Uh, Michael Curtis, I could definitely see that happening uh, for sure. Um, summertime, you can never predict the weather, so probably earlier start times. Uh, and usually uh, whenever, whenever football season, about August when football season starts, uh, they'll start doing earlier start times too because they are they're trying to squeeze in the race before the game because once football season starts they don't no longer care about racing unfortunately uh, as we found out with the uh, Panthers preseason game last year Mr. Race for a Panthers preseason game I was so freaking mad I've never been so mad in my life uh, I'm hoping for at least four more different winners uh, before the playoffs old home guy yeah me too I'm hoping I'm hoping either. Ryan Blaney gets uh, left out being second or third in points and, and people NASCAR has to deal with that. Or I'm hoping uh, at least two people that win a race don't make the playoffs because I want NASCAR to deal with that uh, because I just don't like the point system. Uh, I want them to go to the season long point system or some type of season long point system uh, where wins are weighed more heavily. And because I think that's all anybody ever wanted. I wanted, I, I think they wanted wins to get more, uh, weighed more heavily in the full season point system, but I think that's all they really ever wanted. Do you finally feel, uh, uh, Don McLeese said, do you finally feel Martin Truex is getting a handle on uh, this new car? Yeah, I think uh, I think part of what was going on with Martin Truex had nothing to do with the car. I think he was just weighing what he wanted to do with the future of his career. And I think once he finally made the decision on what he wanted to do uh, with the future of his career, I think that took a big weight off of his shoulders. And I think uh, you've seen him run better ever since then. Right. Uh, I think the same sort of situation uh, is going on with Kyle Busch. I think if Kyle Busch could ever get the contract situation figured out, I think you would see Kyle Busch run a lot better because I think it's just really weighing him down mentally. Uh, he just uh, has too many things to think about that aren't racing. Um, so I think that was weighing him down and I think that was the problem with Martin Truex uh, until he got his uh, contract deal sort of figured out as well um but yeah I think I think Martin Truex is he'll be fine in this car because he even in preseason he said he liked the car he liked the way it drove so I don't think the car was holding him back so much as uh just uh him making the decision about his future uh Douglas Serrano says my dad says Ty Gibbs will replace Truex in the 19 and 2024 uh that's probably a safe bet uh Douglas I think Martin Truex uh, either retires after 2024 or he goes and helps Junior uh, start up uh, Junior's Cup Series side of, of the organization at Junior Motorsports in 2024. I think those are the – I think 2024 either way will probably be Martin Truex's last year at Joe Gibbs Racing. Um, Gerard says 100% agree that the playoff system is uh, uh, trash. Uh, yeah, I, I've never been a fan of it, even when it was just the chase. When they moved it to the chase, I was like, you're doing that just because Matt Kenseth, it was the biggest uh, slap in the face. Like Matt Kenseth had a year so good that they were like, nope, we're not having this again. We're, we're never going to let anybody have a good season like that again. Uh, so they just made this insane uh, playoff system uh, by <laughs> from from the mind of a guy who got caught doing what he was doing uh, in the Hamptons. And he is no longer the president of NASCAR. So I'll leave it at that. Um, to get rid of this ridiculous playoff system, bring back the season long points with an emphasis on wins. I agree with that. Uh, do two X a hundred percent. Uh, that's what I want to do. Do you agree that Jeff Burton is biased against Ross Chastain? Yeah. hundred percent. Jason Pons. I've, I've never seen, uh, and Jeff Burton's a professional, but he's, he's, he's gone off the deep end on Ross Chastain for some reason. I don't know if Ross Chastain wrecked his son 
uh, in the Xfinity series or wrecked the sun earlier in the season or what's going on, but there's definitely a hundred percent bias because you saw it as everybody else made contact throughout the race, even, even the uh, contact under caution uh, with Ross, uh, with uh, um, Austin Dillon and uh, Brad Keselowski, he was sitting there laughing about it, right? Well, he's sitting there laughing about guys running into each other. Oh, ha 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 ha. It's hilarious. But when Ross Chastain does it, uh, barely makes contact with somebody. He just goes off on another one of his Jeff uh, Burton rants, uh, which he's either biased about it or NBC's telling him that they want to build up uh, Ross Chastain as a bad guy so that they have a storyline going into the playoffs. Uh, it's one of the two, uh, but it's definitely noticeable and it's definitely annoying. Uh, even if you're not a Ross Chastain fan, it just you, you're just like, dude, stop talking about Ross Chastain. He's living rent free in your head. That's that's just how I feel about it. Uh, dinner here, dinner's here has got to run. All right, Gerard, thanks for hanging out with us. Uh, good questions. Uh, Donald Camp, I love Ryan Newman, uh, but this 03 season with eight wins led us to the uh, messed up point system we have today. Yeah, for sure. That was the big deal, too. That was the other side of it. Ryan Newman had eight wins, and Matt Kenseth had like one or two wins. Uh, but he, Matt Kenseth had the championship with uh, two or three races left to go in the season. Uh, and, and all that all that would have had to be done to fix that system is to give – more points for winning a race not not like a ton more points but just more points for winning for winning a race uh but what people also forget about that season is well ryan newman wrecked a lot in that season too so uh uh and and that's a, a, as a guy who, who was like man ryan newman's gonna be the next big thing I, I had a couple of ryan newman die cast bought i was like yeah he's gonna he's gonna win he's gonna win this thing in his second year uh, but it didn't it didn't come out to be. And uh, he was always a solid driver. I always respect the old old rocket man, Ryan Newman, but he never had a great year like that afterwards. He he definitely became more consistent, but he, he never uh, he never could figure out how to park it eight times uh, like he did that season. So uh, it was a shame to see that. Um, but it is what it is. Uh, Bush beer should be the sponsor of, of, of Kyle. When Harvick retires, man, that would be a great crossover sponsorship. I mean, you couldn't beat it. Right. The names just line up. Um, it would be really, really cool, uh, and slap Kyle over the car like they did on the old EA NASCAR games. Yeah. Uh, for the, uh, you, you had the old, uh, adult collectibles and then you had the, uh, kids collectibles and the kids collectibles had Dale and Sterling and, uh, where the uh, regular sponsor would have gone. Uh, so, uh, yeah, that would definitely be cool. Uh, we'll see if it happens. Um, I got a feeling Truex will win either at Pocono or, yeah, that's a good, yeah, that's a good point. Uh, Joe Gibbs is really good at Pocono. So this could be, this weekend could be the race that uh, Martin Truex punches that ticket because he, he probably should have won last weekend. That two tire call just really botched him and the two car, two tire call botched the four car strategy as well. Uh, so uh, crew chiefs were going for it. I don't, I don't blame him for trying something, but the two tire call uh, ended up biting them there, but it is what it is. Uh, this might be true at Truex's weekend for sure because uh, Joe Gibbs is is historically good at Pocono. Um, Burton needs to calm down and call the race. Rich L, that's that's a hundred percent right, Rich. Uh, yeah, it, you can have bias, but you can do one of two things about it. You can try not to show that bias, which never hardly ever works. But the other thing you can do about it is, is like what I do, like when I'm talking about Kyle Larson, at the end of saying something about Kyle Larson, I'll say, but obviously I'm biased and I'll point to my hat. So that's all, all Jeff Burton has to do. He's like, look, I'm being hard on Ross Chastain because I just don't like the way he drives. That's all he has to say. He, he needs to come out and acknowledge, I just don't like the way he drives. And I don't like him as a race car driver. I don't, I don't mind him as a person. He can even say it like that. But he needs to acknowledge that he has a massive Ross Chastain bias because it is just uh, – uh, it's so bad. It's just so bad. I don't, I don't know what to say about it. Uh, Daytona will, oh, what was that? Daytona will be wild, especially if we have 15 or more winners. Michael Curtis. Oh, oh, absolutely. Daytona is going to be insane. If, if there is one playoff spot to be had, it's going to be insane. Uh, I, I think even now if there's, if it, if it retains like it is and there's two playoff spots, I think Daytona is just going to be an absolute uh, roll of the dice for whoever your driver is. Uh, you probably just want to run in the back until it's all over with <laughs> and then see where you're at uh, for the last 10 laps, maybe. Uh, Jones and Bell are doing uh, much better with their first opportunity than McDowell's first opportunity was in 08, I believe. Uh, Daniel Miley, uh, that's that's a fair, uh, that's a fair statement. Uh, McDowell, it took him a little while to figure things out, uh, but he's coming to his own now. He's got a crew chief. Uh, and uh, Mr. Harris that he, he's working with uh, pretty good. 
Uh, so he seems to be uh, flourishing with him. Uh, I think his crew chief was uh, Drew Blickensdurfer before that, where he had some success as well. So nothing against uh, Blickensdurfer, but he's he's really hit it off with uh, with Harris. So uh, uh, he's definitely doing good there. Are you going to cook a real bologna burger on this channel sometime? Uh, John Lewis. Uh, I don't know about cook one, but I can show you how to prepare one. I might cook one. I don't know. I might make a, I need to make a short at some point. So that would be a good video to make a short of uh, cooking a uh, bologna burger in uh, the A Speedway style, the uh, South Boston style, and the Orange County uh, Speedway and Rougemont style. Uh, not to be confused with the Orange County Fairgrounds in New York. Let's see. Uh, like to see a playoff system, like a Final Four grid, top ten drivers points in on that grid. Uh, yeah, that could that could definitely work. Um, I don't know. I just like the uh, the full table, the full table of points, uh, like they do in F one. Except uh, instead of cutting it off at, at the tenth place position, I, I like I like points all the way through to the very bottom. Like the last place driver gets one point, so on and so forth, and then you give the winner way more points uh, for winning the race because that's that's the most important thing uh let's see brian france made the sport into wwe and wheels uh, in 2004 i agree with you angus 420 that's absolutely right uh and yeah nothing to add to that i agree he made a lot of terrible decisions uh and uh obviously he was going through some things i don't want to don't want to make light of that but he was going through some things and i don't think he was uh in his right state of mind when he was making some of those decisions uh but those decisions we're still living with today so uh, maybe they should roll some of them back. Uh, Austin Oganoski uh, made a video about it. It's got some language in it, uh, but uh, if you can get past the, uh, you know, if you got small kids, don't watch it in front of them. But he he really goes into him uh, for that. So uh, if you want to see a more uh, in-depth uh, sort of deal about that, check out uh, Austin Oganoski's video uh, where he talks about the uh, decisions Brian France made in the uh, possibly altered state of mind. Uh, T Van, what's up, Baloney? Finally caught uh, and love your chat again. What's up, T Van? Glad, glad you could catch us today. Uh, always glad when you guys can uh, uh, find me. Uh, Kevin Harvick having ten wins and missed the, the final four uh, in the playoff is in the playoff situation. Yeah, that 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 was. Uh, you thought that would have been bad enough for them to make some type of change. Uh, John Hale said that uh, you thought that would have been bad enough to, for them to make some type of change, but no, they they just were like whatever. Uh, but yeah, uh, the, the the nine win season Harvick had, and he didn't even make the final four. That's that's something. Yeah, I, I don't even know how to fix the playoffs because I think the playoffs are ridiculous. So I, I don't know. The only way to fix the playoffs, in my opinion, is to uh, get rid of them. Uh, uh, Mike George said, "Right on, what's up, buddy?" Uh, Daniel Miley absolutely agree about Burton. That's disgusting. Uh, him and Latart uh, was getting close, but backed it off a little bit. Yeah, I noticed at the very beginning of uh, – that's one thing I did notice. At, at the very beginning of the pre-race, uh, Steve Latart had backed up on his statements quite a bit. Uh, they, they were definitely saying a lot of positive things before the race about uh, Ross Chastain. So I think uh, they definitely heard it on social media that they were going too far with how they were talking about him. Now, now look, I don't mind you critiquing Ross Chastain for running into somebody. That's one thing, but it the way they're critiquing him is it's as if he's doing it on purpose. He's just racing you really hard. Like he reminds me in that aspect of Ryan Newman. Ryan Newman raced people really hard too, but they never ever talked about Ryan Newman the way they talk about Ross Chastain. Ryan Newman, they would always say, "Oh, he's the hardest man on the track to pass." But now when Ross Chastain is doing things in a similar nature, a similar aggressive style, they talk about Ross Chastain uh, like he's out there, uh, you know, clubbing baby seals or something like he's just the worst human on the face of the planet. And I, and I just don't get it. I don't get what the uh, I don't get what the situation is. I don't know if it's uh, because they spent more time around Ryan Newman and Ross Chastain's a new guy that they don't really know as much about. So it's easier for them to be uh, that way about him because they don't talk to him or, or something like that, uh, which happens. I mean, it's easy. It's easy to yell at somebody, uh, you know on the internet that you have no idea who he is, it's easy to yell and be mad at them. Uh, so if you don't know somebody, maybe they knew Ryan Newman and that's why they, they treat him uh, with, they treat the same actions with, with different uh, perspectives. So I don't know if that's what's going on, but it's definitely, uh, it's definitely something different. 
spell check, uh, Bubba Wallace started fourth, stage one, second, stage two, tenth, and finished third at New Hampshire. Okay, so you're talking about for that race, uh, Aaron Flynn. I, I got you now. So, yeah, for that race, he had a, he had a great race, uh, absolutely. Uh, but a lot of people were saying that was his most complete race. I, I actually disagree with that. I think his most complete race was the two races he had uh, in 2018 or 2019 with Petty at Martinsville. And then that race he had at uh, Indianapolis uh, was another. Uh, I thought the, the race at Indianapolis where he finished uh, second or third was probably his best race because he took a car that was probably seventh place and got a third place out of it. Uh, so the, the, the people that were saying that was his uh, best or most complete race of all time, I, I, I don't think so. Uh, I'm, I, he's got a lot of haters because of his political views, but he's, he's a decent race car driver, uh, sort of in the same vein as Austin Dillon. He's got tracks he's good at. He's got tracks he's bad at. Uh, but, you know, he's not yet at least. He's not, you know, Chase Elliott, Kyle Larson, guys like that. But he, he's young. He's young in his career. Uh, can, he, can he reach that full potential or not? Uh, we will not know until uh, later on. Uh, Pocono truck race is Matt Benedetto's last chance to win and lock himself in into the truck series playoffs. Yeah. Hopefully he can lock himself in Douglas. Uh, I don't know. I would like to see him win a race. Even if he doesn't lock himself in, I'd like to see him win a race in the truck series uh, because I think he has helped build that team. Rackley wear racing, war racing uh, up to a, a better, better spot than when he got there. If you remember when Josh Berry and we've seen what Josh Berry can do in Xfinity. Uh, we know Josh Berry is a solid driver. And the only reason I bring him up is because we've seen him win, right? Uh, he was only able to get like, I think, an 11th place finish out of those trucks. So even even what's recognized as a really good driver uh, was only able to squeeze his best finish was 11th. So to see uh, Matt Benedetto go, go in there and have a good run with it shows you that, well, you know, Matt Benedetto is definitely a pretty good driver, too. Right. So he, he's got to uh, he's got to just keep doing his thing and hopefully he'll get another shot. Uh at the cup series, if he wants to get there again, uh, to, to be truthful, there's too much twangy voices in the booth. <laughs> One drones into the other. Uh, I got a twangy voice. So I can't even say nothing about that old home guy. Uh, but yeah, uh, Jeff Burton and Dale jr's voice sound almost exactly alike. And it is hard to tell the difference between who's saying what sometimes. So I will, I will agree with that. Uh, they do have two very similar voices, uh, in the booth, and it can get uh, sort of confusing, especially when they all start screaming at the same time, uh, which is an issue I have. They, they, that, that booth likes to scream a lot. Uh, do you remember when DW went after Smoke and Happy for a, for a few years? Reminds me of when Jeff and Ross today uh, go watermelon, man. Yeah, like that's that's one thing uh, the sport will always have. Two guys that uh, just take it take it to the next level, and they'll just keep. Uh, happening to uh, be around each other and happening to uh, bump and bang each other. Uh, so uh, Jeff, Jeff Bodine and Dale Earnhardt was, was probably the biggest one I remember. Uh, so yeah, I definitely remember that though. Uh, Tony Stewart had a few run-ins with a few people, um, but the, the, the um, who was it that Harvick Harvick got into it with Biffle, I think one time too. That was pretty funny. Um, but yeah. There, there've definitely been some great rivalries. Um, let's see. Uh, Smoke called him out on that. Yeah, I, I remember that too. Uh, Bones, what's up, buddy? He said, I'm late. Dang it. That's all right, Bones. I'm here. W uh, just hang out with us for a little bit longer. I'm uh, probably going to go about uh, maybe 10, 10 or 15 minutes uh, longer here, guys. So uh, try to get those in. Um, who was the driver in the eight at Daytona in February? Uh, Reddick or someone else? I think it'll be Reddick, uh, X Dude, uh, too. I think, I think primarily it'll be Reddick because of how they've got most likely sponsorship stuff worked out. The only way I could see it being somebody else is if they get all of the sponsors to sign off and say, uh, yeah, you can put a different driver in there, uh, even though we signed up to sponsor Tyler Reddick. Uh, I think it'll come down to sponsorship more than anything else. Do I think they'll want him to be in that car? Probably not, because he's going to be taking all of your uh, intel and data to another team. So I think beyond it being personal, I think that's the, that's the real tactical reason you just don't want to give them too much information to take over there to 2311 and make them better. Right. Uh, just, just like anybody who would be in a uh, lame duck year. Uh, what's up BB. Awesome run by bell this week. Aaron Armstrong for sure. Glad, glad he locked himself in. I think the kid's got a lot of talent and I hope Toyota keeps him and doesn't get off of him too early. Like they have some other drivers. Um, let's see. Nope. Page jumped down on me a lot here. 
Jeff Burton and <laughs> Jeff Grip Burton and Steve Chaos <laughs> Cripplehead are awful. Awful. Uh, Dean Owen said that uh, for sure. Um, um, let's see. Oh yeah, that's that's a good point. John Lewis said uh, at at that's bad TV. NASCAR fans have been complaining uh, for as long as the sport has been around. Even back in the '90s, people complained about the aero packages. Yeah, the aero packages have have always been an issue. Uh, Chase Elliott said it best. We know about aerodynamics now, so you can't put that genie back in the bottle. So it doesn't matter how they design the cars. Uh, there's always going to be some type of aero uh, issue. So I would agree with Chase on that for sure. Uh, I think he, he he put it pretty well there. Um, just joining, what did I miss? Uh, Whitman. Well, we talked about uh, Chicago, Road America, uh, the point system, a little bit of this and that. Uh, so you can catch these. You can you can catch the full replay of these. Uh, just go to the uh, live stream uh, playlist, and they will be there. Um, so uh, so when Ross does his thing, it's bad in Jeff Burton's eyes. But when Chase Elliott does it to Logano, yeah, that's 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 the exact point I was making. Molten like two 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 people can do the exact same thing, but because Jeff Burton doesn't like Ross Chastain, when Ross Chastain does it, it's terrible. When Denny Hamlin or uh, Chase Elliott or Joey Logano or Kurt Busch, uh, the examples you gave, it's bad or, or it's good when they do it. Uh, so it's it's just uh, it's just a, a bias that he needs to at least acknowledge. If he acknowledged it, I would probably be OK with it because he's at least acknowledged it. Uh, but it's definitely a bias he has and he's not acknowledging it. He's acting like uh, he's not biased. And that's uh, kind of annoying. Uh, worst thing NASCAR did was allow certain companies, uh, Coca-Cola Sprint, uh, to pay and be the only companies allowed to sponsor, uh, for example, uh, no longer seeing uh, Pepsi and Dr. Pepper. Yeah, uh, the Sprint thing is uh, really interesting because Sprint forced out uh, AT&T. AT&T bought out Singular Wireless for the sole purpose, or one of the purposes they bought them out was so they could be on, uh, ironically, Jeff Burton's car, the 31 uh, RCR car at the time. Uh, so they bought out Singular Wireless so they could sponsor a race car and, and Sprint threw up a big fit uh, because they said you could allow the existing contract. Uh, I just remember it being a big hubbub. And at the very end of it, uh, AT&T obviously lost the deal. Uh, so at the end of it, it was just an orange car and there was there were no, no longer even any AT&T logos on it. Uh, so that was a big deal back in the day. But uh, Coke, Coke has uh, actually relinquished uh, some control. Because you do see Dr. Pepper cars. Uh, Bubba Wallace actually drove a Dr. Pepper car this year, a blue blueberry one, uh, I think. And he's he's driven another one. So you do you do see the the soda brands have uh, relinquished some control. Uh, but yeah, for sure that was that was definitely a mistake they made in in the uh, Brian France era. I remember that uh, it was very proprietary. Uh, there's even and and it's still like that to an extent because I forgot who wanted to put up a tent this year, but they couldn't put up a tent because some main vendor of NASCAR uh, was the main vendor and, and some company couldn't put up a uh, hospitality tent, uh, which was really lame because uh, that's just for the fans anyway. So so it, do, it does still go on to an extent. Uh, I don't think it is as bad as it used to be, but I think it definitely still uh, goes on. Good run for Brad in the six for sure. Uh, Aaron, Aaron Flint, uh, hey, Hey, y'all, like the video while you are. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks, Rich. Appreciate that. Um, Dale Jr. is a good commentator, but his voice is a bit too high pitched. Give him uh, the voice of Jim, Jim Ross and he'll be perfect. Uh, that's for sure. Uh, man, do you guys remember Eli Gold? I think Eli Gold was probably the best uh, race, the best guy to call a race uh, that I can remember. I think Kyle Petty tells it like it is uh, on the broadcast and maybe Dale Jarrett too. Uh, hey, for sure, uh, OJ and Toothpaste. Kyle Petty is not scared. He will say whatever he thinks. And uh, Dale Jarrett is not far behind him. Uh, Jill, Dale, Dale Jarrett does it uh, <clears throat> in a little bit of a uh, more smoother way. But Kyle, Kyle Petty will just go out there and uh, tell you exactly what he thinks uh, for sure. Uh, happy birthday to Haley Deegan, said Douglas Rano, uh, for sure. Uh, Haley Deegan's birthday, uh, I think she's, what, 20, 22, 20, 23, something like that. Uh, anyway, she... Uh, she uh she's running pretty good here recently like she's another one pit stops her her team like they can't get the, get the car through tech and stuff like that i think she would have had a better season this year uh, i think her team has held her back a little bit but i was definitely expecting a lot more from uh, haley deegan 
Uh, than she has produced this season, but uh, next year is another year, and maybe she can get something going uh, by the end of this year. But I thought for sure uh, she would have had a better year than she had this year, but there's always next year, and, and there's always a chance she goes to a different manufacturer. I'm not sure how long that Ford contract is. All right. <clears throat> that is, I think that's all the questions I see. Oh, well, here we got some more. Okay. Oh, no, we got way more. Leah Pruitt's arrow was good last week and won Mile High Nationals. Uh, Mark Barnum, yep, that's a, that's a big that's a big factor. Uh, that's the big factor that everybody's saying Stuart Haas is going to dodge. Uh, I think for sure, uh, as long as they're running good there, that'll definitely be uh, a big deal. A lot of the Brian France era mistakes were allowed because the sport had a ton of money coming in at the time. John Lewis, that is, a, that is an excellent point. It was a... It was a golden era where the money was coming in and it felt like nobody could come along. And then we're dealing with the aftermath of all that now. Uh, best cup, uh, best guess cup at North Wilkesboro, probably 2026 would be my guess, uh, John Lewis. Uh, by, the, by the time cup gets there, I think you'll have a truck race or an Xfinity race there before that. Um, Eli Gold was a great announcer, but he tried to slide in a college student. Oh, did not know that, John Lewis. Interesting. Interesting. Oh, man. Uh, I assume that's when he went to the uh, University of Alabama to call some stuff there. Wow. Wow. Learning stuff today. Um, let's see. Could you imagine Howard Cassell up in the booth? I don't, uh, the way Howard Cassell talked, uh, if you guys don't know Howard Cassell, I'll give you a little, uh, and he steps into the batter's box. I don't. I don't know if that would work with uh, NASCAR because uh, he he sort of had that long, drawn out, emphasized every word, every syllable. Uh, yeah, Howard Cassell. That would be hilarious. Somebody should do a skit on that. Uh, Howard Cassell, if he called a NASCAR race, that would be hilarious. Like the the race would be over, and he would still be calling the uh, driver intros or something. Uh, he just talked uh, at such a pace. Uh, energy drinks are out there. A lot of them. Yeah, yeah. Energy drinks, so uh, the drink the drink market has opened up in Cup uh, tremendously. Uh, understand safety with tires, uh, but we need uh, more races where tires matter more. Like this past weekend, I love tire wear races. Uh, Daniel Miley said that. That is for sure the truth. Uh, Mark Barnum said Haley turned 21. Okay, so that's actually a big birthday. That's what I was wondering about. Uh, she can now get uh, alcohol sponsors. So possibly more sponsors will be pouring in to the Deegan camp. Uh, so that is a big birthday sponsor wise for her. Uh, Casey's trivia for today. Who is the only driver to lead over a thousand laps in a season and not win a race? Hmm. <laughs> that is a good question. Sheldon case. Let me think on that for a minute. Uh, Deegan, it needs a cup ride. I miss Elliot Sadler when he was uh, so underrated and such a nice person. Uh, that's got to be uh, Kyle Larson, Sheldon Case. A few years ago, I'm thinking uh, he won a he he led a bunch of laps and did not win a race. That would be my best guess, uh, just off the top of my head. I miss Elliot Sadler when he was uh, so underrated, such a nice person. Uh, I hate that he kind of left with a broken heart. He was uh, robbed of the 2017 championship by Priest in that crazy move. Yeah, uh, man, Ryan Priest. I forgot. I, I I didn't forget about it. I just don't think about it. But yeah, Elliot Sadler's a cool dude. Uh, he drove actually at Orange County in South Austin uh, coming up. I remember him uh, pretty well. I drove a yellow car, uh, if I'm not mistaken, yellow uh, Camaro. Uh, but, yeah, he uh, his one championship, the, the best chance he had at winning the championship uh, in Xfinity, and it was <laughs> uh, old, old Priest got him for sure, uh, unfortunately. Uh, uh, plus 16 winners. Uh, do you think NASCAR reconsiders the win and you're in? Uh, NASCAR is wishy-washy, so if enough people got on social media and said something about it, they would change it for sure. Uh, I think so for sure. Christopher Birdsong uh, with that question. Uh, I don't know why that sent twice saying it's 420. I don't know why it sent twice either, buddy. Uh, I miss Sadler too, said Serrano. Ford wants Haley Deegan in an Xfinity car. I think uh, Haley Deegan could be in an Xfinity car right now if she wanted to be. Uh, I think she's just trying to play it smart and, and work her way up the right way. Uh, it seems to be big to her, but at some point uh, you just got to uh, say, hey, I'm going to go race Xfinity. I know I haven't won anything in trucks, but we're going to go uh, – we're going to go race Xfinity and, you know, blame it on the team or something like that. Uh, Larry, the cable guy should call a race <laughs> for sure. <laughs> that would be a good one too. Benny Parsons and Buddy Baker were awesome. And man, that's probably my favorite booth, booth of all time. 
uh, Benny Parsons, Buddy Baker, and Ned Jarrett, uh, and and uh, Bob Jenkins, probably my favorite uh, TV guys for sure. I uh, miss old Bob Jenkins and Benny Parsons, man. Those guys were good. Uh, let's see, uh, which, uh, which service do I have to buy to let me stream the races on demand, uh, an hour after the race is over? That's, uh, that's a good question. Uh, I guess Fox, the Fox sports deal and, uh, Cal Tiki, what's up buddy. And, uh, probably Peacock will let you see the races, uh, maybe an hour after they're over with, but check with somebody else. That's just a guess on my part. Don't, uh, check with somebody else before you actually buy them. Uh, Jeff Gordon, probably in 2010, uh, Seabell, congratulations on the win. Uh, that guy does that KB, uh, shorts, uh, would have had a heyday with, uh, with Howard Cosell. That's for sure. Rich L, uh, no doubt about it. Uh, it was, uh, 1981 Sheldon K said. So, uh, okay. So 1981, that is, mm, that is before, uh, I remember. So, Let's see, 1981. Who would have? Benny Parsons, maybe. Is it Benny Parsons, Sheldon Case? Uh, big stock cars on a street course, terrible idea. Bring back Chicago Land. Uh, yeah, man, I, that's what I don't understand. I wish Chicago Land uh, would be YouTube TV, said Rich L. Uh, whoever was asking about what streaming service you need to buy. Uh, uh, YouTube TV, I've actually heard a lot of good things about, too, by the way. Um, Big stock cars on a street course is a terrible idea. Bring back Chicago land. Yeah, I miss Chicago land. Uh, millionaire. I'm gonna go with millionaire. I'm a king millionaire. I'm, I'm sorry if I'm saying your wrong, uh, name wrong, buddy. Uh, NASCAR YouTube channel releases them. I think a day or two after. I know the highlights are minutes after. Um, yeah, I, I know it, it takes a couple of days on uh, regular YouTube for sure. Uh, ben Kennedy looked like Bill. <laughs> <laughs> Christopher Bird song. Uh, <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Mark, Mark Barnum. Uh, ben Kennedy looked like Bill Juice Lightfoot had him out late last night uh, on the news, or was that uh, something he was running from uh, Bubba Wallace? Uh, yeah, I'm not going to get into to, to politics, but but Lori Lightfoot does look like Bill Juice. I will say that um, those memes are pretty funny. Do um, you think Hendrick saw Larson destroy the competition last year while Elliott took a took a back seat this year and they put the nine uh, as a top priority? Um, eh, I don't know, man. I don't know. I feel like he's just got two really good drivers, and I feel like Chase has figured out this car uh, faster than Larson has figured out this car. Uh, but I think it'll even out. I think Chase is just having another stellar season. I mean, people forget the year before Chase had – just a, just absolutely a stellar season when nobody else was doing anything in a Chevrolet. I think that needs to be pointed out as well. Nobody else. Uh, uh, Alex Bowman got a couple of wins in a Chevrolet, but but nobody was consistently running in the Chevrolet like Chase Elliott was that year. Uh, so I think Chase, Chase Elliott is just a good driver, and he figured this car out, this particular package out before Kyle Larson did. Uh, Chicago lost the NHRA too. I thought uh, I'm not sure about the NHRA. Uh, I watched that very casually. Uh, the answer is Harry Gant. Oh, man. Was that, uh, was he, uh, Sheldon Case, was he in the 33 uh, at that point? Or was he uh, driving for the other guy in like the uh, 47 or whatever before he got to the 33? Uh, YouTube, YouTube TV can say, can show you all the shows you want. Uh, I got it cheap and, and it's good. Uh, Rich L, uh, giving uh, YouTube TV a plug. And, and I'll give him a plug too, because I have actually heard a lot of my friends say a lot of good things about him. Uh, so I will plug YouTube TV as well, because I know a lot of my friends, that's the only service that they do have. Um, I don't get why Ryan Priest has the audacity to get mad and call out a driver for making a mistake. Yeah, when he basically, I, I get what you're saying, uh, when he did almost the same thing uh, to uh, Elliot Sadler. Uh, Rusty Wallace uh, would be great in the booth. Uh, just a thought. I think uh, he works for uh, the TV the uh, radio deal. I, th I thought he was doing the radio deal for MRN or something like that. So he is technically in the booth. He's just uh, with radio, I think. But yeah, Rusty Wallace, he definitely, definitely would be good in the booth. Um, let's see. Lewis Kemp, who's talking about Harry Gant? Harry Gant uh, led a thousand. He's the only driver to lead a thousand laps in the 1981 season and not win a race, Lewis Kemp. Uh, that's why that's why we're randomly talking about Harry Gant off and on here. Um, it's 106 in here, Mr. Berger, West Texas, West Texas stays hot bones. Uh, good luck with that, buddy. Uh, walk, walk in the tunnels when you're on the sidewalk. I think they got tunnels there to walk in, uh, in the heat in the, in the cities. 
Um, let's see, in-car camera on YouTube every week, no commentary. Yeah, that's really cool, too. Daniel Miley said that. Uh, I wish they would just put it on Ross Chastain uh, every week. Where are you from, uh, Baloney Burger? Uh, originally from Durham, North Carolina. I live on the uh, North Carolina-Virginia border uh, right now, though. Uh, I want to see Elliot Sadler in the JRM 88 car. I, I would like to see Elliot Sadler make one more race, but uh, he seems very happy doing what he's doing with his kids, playing softball and stuff like that. Uh, Herman Wallace in the booth, he's funny. Yeah, that's for sure. Uh, Mark Barnum, uh, you can really, you can, yeah, woo. if you can tell, I really, really want Elliot Sadler back. Such an underrated talent. Uh, he was kicked to the curb and shunned by NASCAR community for no reason because he wasn't as great as the 88. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, he had his chances. Uh, he was he was one of those guys that got with the right team at the wrong time. He was with, with uh, Yates when they weren't good. Then he got with uh, he got with Ever Ever Everham as they were on their way down. Like, he didn't get with the good Everham. Uh, he started in the 47 and uh, – Oh, sorry, I hopped around. But, yeah, yeah, Elliot Sadler, uh, he's definitely a good driver, and, and I, I hope he comes back and makes uh, – he talked for a little while. He might make another late model start race. So if, if he if he runs a late model race, I'll let, let all you guys know about that. Um, but uh, back to Harry Gant. He started in the 47 and ran most of the remaining schedule in the 33 for Mach 1 Racing, uh, which obviously uh, was uh, – I think Mach 1 was uh, bought out by – is that were they bought out or was that the team that they started? Man. Long time ago, I, I can't remember uh, that. Let's see, but yeah, that was uh, that was uh, Burt Reynolds and uh, the stunt man. What was the stunt man's name? Anyway, but that was their team, Mach One Racing. Uh, so that's where that started, 1981. Good to know. Uh, it was hot here in Colorado again today. Oh wow, it's hot in Colorado. That's not good. Um, let's see, the Rex hurt his head, like Junior. Uh, that could be. He he might have uh, he might have had some of that going on. On that Junior's got going on, 90 plus degrees here for the next 10 days in Iowa. Yeah, it's hot in North Carolina too. We're fixing to go out testing uh, for the next two days uh, for the late model deal. So I'm gonna I'm gonna deal with that. You might I don't know. I got the I got the color correction on the Canon camera over there, uh, but my face might get redder <laughs> if it gets too red for the uh, color correction uh, to fix it. Um, Lewis Kemp, thanks, guy. I love Harry Gant. He drove for Mannheim auctions in '94. His last year in Bush, I got to work on one of his cars, did some paint work. That's awesome, uh, Lewis. I think we talked about that in the comments earlier today uh, as well, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, you got in, you got in with, with one of the DuPont tents as well, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I think uh, with drivers asking price, you'll see a lot of young drivers come back uh, racing, uh, Bain and others. I think so, too. I think uh, some of these old guys, if they don't get the money they want, uh, it's not going to be worth it to them anymore. Uh because they'll just be ready to move on. So I think I think you'll see a big youth movement here in the future because uh, they're not going to be able to pay these guys what they've been paying them uh, unless something changes financially, uh, which I don't see happening uh, anytime soon. Right down the road from me, 20 minutes south of Richmond. Uh, Durham, uh, <laughs> yeah, Dur Durham's really bad about speeding tickets, but they do have a bunch of uh, uh, craft breweries. Uh, Full Steam is over by the old Durham Bull Stadium. So if you're ever in Durham, North Carolina, uh, just Google uh, Full Steam, and you'll get to see the old Durham Bull Stadium where they full, uh, filmed Bull Durham and uh, Full Steam. Uh, try the Rocket Science or the Working Man's Lunch. Those are my two favorites. Uh, I missed uh, chat talking about sh uh, Chicago. Uh, dumbest move I've seen in a long time. Uh, yeah, a lot of people are not happy about the street race. Uh, I don't mind a race in Chicago, uh, but I don't know if a street race is the right way to go about it. And uh, like a lot of people said, we got too many – uh, road course is on the schedule as it is, and that replaces a road course, but I'd like to see a road course dropped for another short track or something like that. Uh, Rich L says, everybody stay hydrated, y'all. Um, JJ Yelly uh, needs a shot in better equipment. I think he was written off too quickly. Uh, he's another one that was actually written off really quick by Gibbs. Uh, Hal Needham. Th thank you, Dino. Uh, Dino and Hal Needham and Burt Reynolds, uh, Skull Bandit Racing, uh, formerly Mach 1 uh, Racing. Um, I'm working on a crew boat in the Gulf of Mexico, and it's nice out here. <laughs> Donald Camp, what's up, man? Do, are you uh, crew boat? Are you are uh, doing some oil rigging, Donald Camp? What's what's going on out there? Um, Newman should be back in a uh, racing cup. Uh, man, I hope he gets another chance, but I don't know if anybody's going to take a chance on him. Uh, all it's going to take is a flying car into a building. Oh man, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I hope not. I hope not. I hope not. Um, 
he's talking about the Chicago race, of course. Um, how do you feel about Phoenix being the championship race? I personally think NASCAR should rotate it. So the championship, uh, uh, King Millionaire said that. Um, I think the uh, championship race and the all-star race should be rotated like the Super Bowl. Uh, and, and if they're going to continue to keep doing the uh, the Bush Clash, that should also be rotated, sort of like the NFL does the Super Bowl. You should rotate it every single year uh, and have it at a different place because uh, I feel like that's only fair. Obviously, they're giving Phoenix this race because Phoenix has dumped a ton, a ton, ton, ton of money in redoing that facility. Uh, so that's why they get it. But after after this particular go round, it should be sort of like the NBA does it too. Whenever a stadium uh, redoes their facility, they get the All Star Game. Uh, that's sort of the unwritten rule. So uh, if if a uh, the last the last race of the season should rotate, not only for that, but just so teams can't always practice for the last race of the season. Uh, like you, I'm sure Hendrick and Penske, they 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 test all year for the for the last race of the season. No doubt in my mind. Uh, Elliot Sadler also never won a race at Daytona. Douglas Serrano, that's true, but he was an amazing plate racer. Uh, fun fact, that is a good fun fact, though. Uh, they should reward the tracks uh, that put on the best fan experience. Sheldon Case, that's absolutely right. I agree with that. Um, need more short tracks on the circuit. We got uh, so many that the cup can go to. Yeah, uh, Dusty Conjure said that. I would like to see some type of rotation where uh, you have historic tracks and, and you would go to that historic track like every four years and, and you would have four tracks on a four-year rotation so it would never get stale and, and it would give back to the fans that helped uh, build the sport. They would get to go to the tracks that uh, are no longer there. Like you could put like North Wilkesboro, uh, uh, Hickory or something like that. I'm just throwing them out there. Like I'm not I'm not trying to be uh, name every single track, but ha have like a rotation of four tracks on there that, that you could go to. Obviously, some of those tracks would have to be completely overhauled, like North Wilkesboro, Hickory. You would have to put in a bunch of seats and stuff like that. But to have a rotation like that of, of some of the older tracks, older short tracks uh, specifically, uh, to sort of give back to the fans who feel like uh, they're, they're being pushed out for these street courses and stuff like that. I think that would be a good move by NASCAR, but they're not going to listen to me, but I, I think it would be a cool, a cool thing to do. Uh, Clash should rotate stadiums. Uh, All-star race should be a street course. Yeah, I, I'd be cool with that. Like if you want to try something crazy, do it for a non-points uh, paying event. Uh, I'm all about that Angus 420. Uh, I think that's a really good idea. Uh, and definitely the champ. And he said also rotate the championship race. Uh, Sadler needs to run SRX next year. Uh, T Van said that. Uh, I think Sadler would run SRX, except he's having too much fun with his kids uh, playing softball. And I think he plays softball himself. Uh, so I don't know if that'll happen or not. Uh, I think he's just uh, he's in he's in the point of spending time with his kids. I think that's why the probably the biggest walked away, other than his sponsor dumping him. Uh, cause I got a new CEO. Uh, I would like to see the championship race, uh, at a track, not on the regular season. That, that would be uh, pretty cool. Yeah. A, a, a race that they don't go to twice. So it'll be a, a total crap shoot. Uh, that, that is a good point. Mark Barnum. Uh, I work as a cook or a galley hand, uh, this job at a rig we got our housing people. It's another, uh, 30 to 60 days. Uh, been out just under 60. Oh, that's rad, dude. I used to be a cook too, man. Uh, that's awesome. Um, as, as hot as it is outside, it's twice as hot in that kitchen, ain't it, brother? Um, uh, or an all-star race uh, would be a historic track. Uh, will Sadler's kids race in NASCAR? Ah, man, I don't know, Douglas. I hadn't seen them yet. Uh, I think I think they're just playing softball as far as I know. But I, I know his brother, Hermie, is really big into go-karts. So they definitely have a opportunity to hop in a go-kart and work their way up if they'd like to. Uh, I'm sure if they want to do it, they can do it. Uh, I agree for sure. The Clash and the All-Star Race should rotate. NASCAR is all about marketing, not the fan, uh, but love the sport anyway. Uh, yeah, I'm in the same boat. If, if they feel like they overlook us fans and, and they're just all about taking in money for themselves uh, is what it feels like some days for sure. Uh, just imagine a, a heartbreaking loss. You have a championship in your grasp and you'll need a few more laps to pass the car, uh, <clears throat> but instead ruins your day. The guy behind you wins the title. Yeah, that's that's a tough day. Seen it happen a bunch of times, man. Uh, Molten Rage said that. Also, don't release the championship track until the start of the playoffs uh, to give the teams minimal times <laughs> just to uh, drill the practice. Uh, that, that would be good on, on two levels. Uh, Angus 420, uh, and I'm going to end on that one. Uh, that would be good on several levels because uh, it would it would build all that, that drama that NASCAR wants to build drama, right? So that it would build that. And 
uh, it wouldn't let them, it wouldn't let the big teams practice obviously for a championship race. Uh, so yeah, that would, that would be a good idea and it would just be super fun, uh, either way. But, uh, yeah, that's going to do it for me here today, guys. I am uh, going to go get a bite to eat and call it a day. I uh, Douglas Serrano, what's up? We'll get this one in real quick. Paul Menard won the 2011 Brickyard 400 for his dad because of his dad's been trying to win there for 35 years. I want to see uh, if Sadler's kids can do the same thing at Daytona. That would be cool, Douglas Serrano. Uh, that is cool. And on, on that, guys, I appreciate you hanging out with me, uh, and thanks for your time. Peace.